you know, because my dad's gang affiliated and all that, had those problems growing up my whole life where I was like, oh, you're not going to fit in, bro. You're not going to be your dad. You're not tough. I never learned about our money. Oh, can't see the bruises. And Selling them all these dreams and all these just slays down it. So I was living on this persona, bro. You know, high all the time, oh, lying dude. all the time. It was real awkward. Yeah. And then I started getting into, started dealing. Sitting in this dark room with a bunch of strangers, selling them all these dreams and all these stories like it was me. Like that was actually who I was. Full well knowing I was lying the whole entire time. Well, how does that make you feel now? It helped build my character. You know, how strong I actually am without having a substance in my body to make me feel on top of the world. I got invited out by some friends, bro, before lockdown happened. And I turned around and said to them, oh, bro, I can't come. So they all left, all packed their cars up. And I was like, oh, what are they up to? Oh, don't worry about them. You're going to have the best night of your life. I was sitting in that my dark little messy ass room with shit all over the floor and I was just got this hankering like go on Snapchat, go on Snapchat, go on Snapchat. And when I went on Snapchat, every single person that was in that car all had their own story. And I opened it. We're all the same age and they're all out there partying, having a good time. And I'm sitting here, 20, in a dark room by myself in a mess. Smoking meth. Did you seek help from family or you have to go professional? I, I got clean by myself. No one likes to be told you have to get off the gear. No one likes to be told what you need to do, especially when you have a habit. They just need an ear. I just wanted someone to listen. Yeah. And someone just to be like, I understand, bro. What are some of your um, regrets there, my bro? My regrets with, with that, bro, would be knowing that I shouldn't have been on that thing, but still being on it. Yeah. That was one of the, um, that's the biggest regret is. Why? Why is because I let myself get too far gone. It's disappointed my parents. Yeah. Really. They never ever saw me on that track. Teachers loved me. Everyone loved me at school. Yeah. Always got told, this boy's going far. This boy, Jason's son's going far. I always had a thought he didn't accept me. He didn't give a fuck what I was up to. Yeah. He really accepted me for oh, who you... I was. Oh, if nice. If I was gay, with my boots. You know, sometimes he'd come home and catch me in a dress, just walk past me. But <laughs> that, that they still thought, oh, I, you know, my dad's a gangster. How yeah. am I going to do it? When I came home and told him about everything, he was like, and do you believe that was really where you were supposed to be? Trying to impress me? You yeah. don't give a fuck about me. I was like, you're right. I actually don't care what, I actually don't care. Yeah, but it's, it's still dead. Yeah, it's still dead. But like even that, there has changed his relationship with me. Yeah. Our That's relationship's heartbreaking. changed heaps. Yeah. Like now we have mandatory Sunday dinners. I can't even go to bed without him calling me every night. It's annoying. <laughs> like, you know, all that kind of yeah. stuff. Even with my mum, she you know, she went from not even talking to me yeah. at all. She was so, so hurt, so embarrassed. My whole family was my nan. Yeah. That was the biggest one. I've always lived with my nanny, I've always been my nanny's boy. Yeah. That was, that's probably the biggest regret, was yeah. with my grandparents, losing that time. What would you say to nan now? Sorry. We still haven't had a proper talk after it. And she invested a lot of time in me, as well as the other mokos, and I just shat that all down the drain. And what are some of the things that you and nan used to do together there, bro? I just remember cooking with my nan. I haven't done that for a little bit. I only like doing it with her because I'm just like, now you put that in. Oh, you put too much in, we've got to start again. What are you doing? Like all that kind of stuff. Those are the things I miss. Yeah. Those are the things that I feel like I took a little bit for granted there. But when I was growing up, it was more of a, a, a go out and do something. I was never allowed to play video games like my other cousins. They wouldn't let, let me. Yeah. So that's how we had fun. Go chase goats up the hill. 
getting yelled at because I let the pig out of the trap because I felt sorry for the piglet, <laughs> like, <laughs> all that kind of stuff. Tell me, what's something you're looking forward to? I just really want to take life as it comes and just enjoy every little moment of it. It's good to be home and back into a familiar place because this is where I first got my hair cut. <laughs> This feels like home sitting in your barbershop, bro, you know, because I haven't been here for so long and yeah. just to get my hair cut here like every fortnight when I'm growing up. Yeah, it's really good to be back here. So I love being back in my um, back to my normal haircut. Awesome.